Ireland, a little country with a rich history and one of the most breathtaking places on earth. In this nation of seekers and storytellers, adventure is just around the corner, if you know where to look. Sean Smith is one of Ireland's most exciting chefs with a passion for fresh ingredients. Legend has it, he'll only cook it if he's shaking the hand of the guy who's caught it. When George Tracy's not saving lives with the Dublin Fire Brigade, you'll find him hunting, gathering, and living off the land. He's a man with a special set of skills. In this brand new show, our two fearless foragers will travel the length and breadth of this bountiful island to meet the produce pioneers who are catching, growing, and brewing some of the greatest food on the planet. And when they've found what they're looking for, they'll create some unforgettable dishes. This is Find It, Cook It. As our adventurers arrive in Galway, the weather takes a little turn for the worst. Well, they don't call it the Wild Atlantic Way for nothing, I suppose. Galway oysters are world-renowned, and when you're in these parts, Dermot Kelly is the only man to see. How are you? How are you, Dermot? Good to see you. Yeah, great to see you again. You're welcome to Galway Bay. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah. Grand start day. Yeah, it is nice and wet, all right, but we'll get over it. You're after a few oysters, I think, yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, a few. Should we grab a few down in the bay here? If we Lovely. catch a park here. Right. Yeah. We go down to try and find a few. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Great to get you into the water and get you to see where the oysters come from. And you'll be able to explain it to your customers when you go back to nice sunny Dublin. <laughs> this is our own piece of ground here where we have the, the oysters. So we, uh, what we have here on this ground is the wild uh, native uh, flat oyster. They've been in the bay for 4,000 years. And the first record of the Kellys in this area is back in the year 1000 when we took over a castle down the road. So we've been here before, <laughs> before the laws. So here they're feeding on the phytoplankton in the water. That's the only food. So the flavors in that phytoplankton in is coming from the Burren, uh, in the south, Connemara in the north, and the fields of Athenry, where all the sweet water is coming in. The Atlantic coming in five metres up and down twice a day. The oysters themselves, and they filter 11 litres an hour. So you really have, after four or five years, you really have the essence of the ocean when you're eating those uh, native flat oysters. And food tastes different in the rain as well. <laughs> Not sure if you've ever had a picnic in the rain, I but... <laughs> so we scoop up a few of these and maybe yeah, yeah, have yeah, a yeah. look at them here. Get the fork in under them and you'll get up a few anyway there. That's it. Ah, uh, George! <laughs> George, you didn't do great there. <laughs> and you can get the smell. I know the camera can't get the smell, but you can get the smell. It's that kind of earthy, yeah. a lovely fresh smell off them. I have a knife with me, if you want to try one. Yeah. You didn't bring your own knife? No. Right. Wow. There you go. And you can tell us what you think. We'll get a big one for George. Have you ever eaten them straight from the water before? No. No. Completely different, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Sometimes when they're on ice, they can be too cold. It's kind of earthy, salty. There's a kind of a zinginess. You can really taste the zinc in them. You can, yeah. Yeah? Zinc adds a little pep to everything, so everyone is in good form <laughs> after it. <laughs> Oysters have been in our blood for generations. And our father, I suppose, was the first man that started adding value to them back in the early 50s. I mean, the 50s was a poor time and they were looking for some way to stay and, and to keep on the land. He sold his own oysters first from his own boat and then he would have started buying off, off other boats. Myself and my brother run the business now and our own two wives, so it's a full family business. Motorcycles laden down with fresh shellfish, our bikers brave the rainstorm to follow up on a little tip Dermot has given them. No Leahy's family has been keeping bees in the unspoiled sleeve Ohi Mountains for generations. There's a reason connoisseurs call his little pots of gold the Rolls Royce of honey. Time to get suited up. Good man, George. <laughs> no leads the way as the lads follow, looking like they're in an episode of Breaking Bad. So tell us about the flavours. I suppose the flavours within our honey comes from the natural landscape. We have an amazing landscape. Nature is rugged. Um, very low for rate of fertiliser, pesticides. It's that whole multiple of wildflowers and weeds and everything that grows in the hedgerow from your blackberry, your dandelion early in the year, your clover. You can taste the mountain in it. 
that'll be the last flower for the winter. Right. And that's what we call the, the winter food for the bees. And and would it be kind of fruity at different times ah, of the year? It would be or at different types of the year. You'd have like, and I suppose in the spring you have one type of it. It can be very is strong and seedy. The summer honey, which would be mainly your clover, blackberry, is really smooth, it's soft, it's very, very floral. It's a real, bu- it's like a, when you open the jar, it's like that bunch of flowers there. You can really smell the bouquet in them. It's absolutely marvellous. It's like the bees being little chefs in their own right. And they're bringing all these different nectars together into the hive to produce an amazing honey. As they prepare to visit the beehive, Noel explains why his Galway bees are the toughest around. We have a unique climate in the west of Ireland. You probably you cross the Shannon, all of a sudden it's raining. Hardy, a hardy bee. So you need a hardy bee that's going to fly, that'll fly in the rain. Right you know, and they'll thrive in it, and you know, and they're, they're out there and they're doing it. And that's the big thing we find, you know, if you, know, if you go for your imported bees yeah. or your different bees, they're softer, they're yeah. not able. Even funny enough, bees coming up from Wexford, yes. you know, they can be a little bit softer and it just takes a while for them yeah. to climatise because you are, I suppose you're coming up three, three what is it, 200 miles north. Mm. My father, you saw, I was saying, my grandfather, when he'd buy cattle, you all bought from the north and sold to the south. Yeah. During the summer, they're out flying, they're working and they're all muscle. But during the winter, the bee isn't flying as much. So when it gets cold in the winter, they have built up that residue of fat, you know, and they survive. And they don't, bees don't actually hibernate. They're always moving around in that cluster within the hive, keeping the queen in the middle to protect her. Mm-hmm. She's number one in the hive. And they will do everything to protect her, as long as she's doing her job. The minute she stops doing her job, they'll chuck her out and put in a new one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have bees at home, no? I do, yeah, I keep bees in Bray. It's just be nice and calm. Right. These are lovely quiet bees. They're busy doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. They're out foraging. They don't even take an interest in us. They're too busy for that. And we're going to be smoking them to, to make them calm, and then they're going to come out and have a look at us, I'm sure. And uh, we might try and find a queen if we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'll do is I'll just put the smoke down here. I just want to lift this now. There might be a few bees flying, so don't panic. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm a bit freaked with it, to be honest with you. This time of the year, you'll see very few drones left. The drone has one job, to mate with the Virgin Queens, and that's it. They don't ha- have any other purpose, really, and truly. Sounds like fun. Yeah, <laughs> but um, tis, one, tis one night only. <laughs> We're proud of what we do, yeah. and I think we have pride in our work. Our yeah. honey is raw, it's pure, it's natural. We add nothing okay. but love, and, and we take nothing away. Yeah. What can you give me? I think if you're going to cook us some oysters, definitely we have a beautiful uh, chili-infused honey. Right. Our little secret ingredient is a little drop of Jemison whiskey. Oh, geez. Nothing is finished without a drop of whiskey. Will you? <laughs> the lads bid farewell to Noel and his secret ingredients because Sean is off to meet the legend that is the ginger veg man. Gordon's hair might be red, but his leaves are as green as it gets. Wow, welcome. So this is like, yeah, this is where all magic yeah. happened. You have the whole fields. Thanks for having us, Gordon, yeah. So what's going on here? Um, we started this venture about two years ago to supply healthy salads in and around Galway City, and we've put it into organic conversion, and now we grow salads 52 weeks of the year and supply them to restaurants and to um, shops, and we've got some great customers that really enjoy it. This is how it all starts. There's five species inside here that we grow together, and these really build up all the soil nutrients, and so we grow really healthy, biologically alive soil. You've got to make sure that this is really good and if this is good you'll have really tasty crop and then customers want more so it comes back to the old ways of creating good soil and putting in our new innovative ways of just working with soil biology it's hot this one's hot this is a salad rocket what happens is we cut it multiple times and the more you cut it actually there's more fiery and peppery the taste gets in it (laughs) 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 we'll help you on your journey so we'll give you a few bits come on up here we'll give you some salad and we'll give you some rocket as well. And what we always a uh, veg grower or what did you do uh, before? Ford, no, before I was uh, an engineer. Um, would have built out a lot of pharmaceutical plants and just saw some things in the, happening in the food industry that weren't great and said, well, how do we help try and just move this needle? Well, we have amazing potential. Like, we're a green isle. We have amazing potential what we can do here. And there's going to be a, more of a focus on the nutrient density, which is your taste. We have really strong taste buds and capabilities and that was the customer is going to become more and more discerning and we've got to keep moving to do that and I'm going to lie, I'm, I'm going all in to create for that. So while Sean has been traipsing around a soggy field, George has been making himself comfortable in Galway Bay Brewery, heating on and endless barrels of delicious beer. I think Sean got the short straw. 
Tom is the head brewer here. What he doesn't know about beer is not worth knowing, except where the glasses are. So Tom, what's Galway Brewery all about? For me, uh, innovation, quality, like there's some beers we make week in, week out, and try hard to make sure they're like, like impeccable and you know the same every time. And trying to use, I guess, local produce as, as much as we can, you know, um, support local farmers, Irish farmers, because uh, you know without farms there is no beer, you know. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The stout we have open here, it's uh, got kind of lots of coffee and chocolate going on, a bit of sweetness, um, you know, and a little bit of bitterness from the hops as well. It's kind of a very full, decadent beer, you know. Perfect. Perfect with your uh, with the oysters. There you go. And uh, give yourself a drop as well. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Cheers. It's quite creamy. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Uh, good pairing for stews. Um, weather like today as well, you know. Yeah, uh, good barbecue weather. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Irish barbecue. Yeah, yeah. What's with the barrels? Barrels, the main reason is they're porous. Yeah. And we're doing wild beers in here, so there's like native yeasts and, and bacteria um, that would live in the air, in the wood. They wouldn't be in steel, because steel isn't porous, yeah. but with the wood as a living, breathing kind of vessel. Yeah. So when you ferment your beers in these vessels, and then you pull your beer out when it's done, and you just fill it back up again, and then the yeast and bacteria that's in the wood you know, continues to evolve and ferments that new beer. And then I guess over over years, um, you see that kind of flavor evolution and you get like a great character yeah. in the beers that you, you, you couldn't possibly get in, in steel tanks, you know. So. Okay. Having just about survived the Galway weather, it's time to create a little bit of magic. George, we're back again. Yeah. Good man. There's an apron. Get oh, that on you for the start, yeah. That was a dirty old day we had down there, yeah? It's freezing, all right. Hope these oysters are worth it, Sean. So, the first dish we're going to do is the native oysters straight up. Maybe we serve them with a little bit of honey, like, uh, like Noel suggested. And then we'll try and mix, say, the mussels with the beer, which would be nice. It's kind of a Belgian kind of a theme towards it. Then, garden salad. And what we do is we might do a tempura. Maybe a little bit of the uh, Noel's honey with a little bit of chili and a little pepper and we just have a little play. Nothing too overcomplicated. So I just I can do at home myself. Yeah, 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 if you can. I wouldn't think you'd do much at home with you, George. <laughs> what I was quite surprised when I went down there is the, the temperature of the water, you know? The temperature of the water was around 15, 14, 15 degrees and the, oy the oyster that I tasted was completely different. It kind of reminded me of this kind of wine thing that when you open the wine and you let the wine breathe, at a certain temperature, the flavors kind of become more robust, and and I find that same with the oyster. Now, could I do it in a restaurant? I don't think I'd get away with it. So, George, we're just going to serve them straight up. So, in at the back, a little crack. So, what's the back in there at the hinge? Is it? At the hinge, yeah. And uh, I just give them a little slide off the the muscle there, and straight onto the ice. Easy. Easy, yeah. Um, I'm going to do one more, and you're going to try it. Can you not cut yourself? Please. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's All it. Right. Perfect. And just bring it around the side. Yeah. Concentrate on your face, George. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to lose a finger. It's pretty good for a first go, isn't it? Thanks, Chef. So this is what I would normally serve in the restaurant, straight up, like this. The other side of it is this is uh, Noel's honey here, you know. The chili one. It's the chili one. So I actually think that it would work well with the oysters and he oh, actually... chili and uh, whiskey? Chili and whiskey, he said, that there was the flavour of it. Bang her in there to see what, see what the score is. I'm going to have one as well. Mm. Does it work? Yeah, it's so sweet at the start and then you get a little bit of heat at the end. Yeah. Yeah. It really works. I bet you were freezing when you got home. Jeez, it's a Baltic. And just the frost in there. This is lovely. As the crew stuff their faces and the lads start preparing the next dish, talk turns to George's job. So what's it like working on the fire brigade? You get to be in, in positions so other people wouldn't see. Yeah. Lots of, lots of babies, you know, people get, get caught out. Yeah. Or bad weather. Right. You know, in the snow. Yeah. I think last year in our station we did it for four babies, you know. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. And would you be trained to do that? No, or? Absolutely, yeah. We're all yeah. paramedics as well. Paramedics, yeah. Mm. So we can give you, as a, as a team, we can give you the same care and you'd have in a resource room. Okay, so you, if I drop dead in the morning with a heart attack, you could probably uh, give me the kiss of life. <laughs> So this is the, the red wine shallot, George. Um, so it's finely diced shallots, a little bit of red wine, some nutmeg, some pepper. Would you put heat with this? Would you put Tabasco on it? No. You could put Tabasco on this as well. Yeah, You'd have that on the side. Have it on the side. Go for it. Yeah, perfect. That was fantastic. I got, in my oyster, I got a little bit of smoothness. So initially I got this kind of vinegar. And then I had the creaminess of the oyster, you know? So it kind of makes them a little bit more yeah. creamy. Only it's nice as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of sweet. And it gives a little bit of crunch, a little bit of bite to it, you know? Yeah, a bit texture. George, have you got the pancetta done yet? Come on, chef. It's not bad, yeah, yeah. It's not bad for the first go, George, yeah. You might make it yet. This is a very, very simple one that you can do at home. So it's kind of a surf and turf. We might just get you to open up a few as well while we're waiting, seeing as you're not the fastest, sharpest tool in the box, is that what they say? Do you want to see if I can find you some flavour out there? Flavour? <laughs> <laughs> I can ask Johnny. That's Johnny. Johnny, yeah. Johnny flavour for chef. <laughs> a little bit of Worcester, a little bit of cream, and a little bit of Parmesan, yeah? Uh, maybe an Italian thing are going on here, I don't know what you want to call it, you know? Put the bacon on top. So that gains the texture now. Yeah. The lardo melts from the bacon, the parmesan kind of uh, crusts up, the cream kind of caramelizes and you have a, a kind of an unami flavor, like a, a sea bacon-ish, kind of a surf and turf thing going on, you know? This is the kind of idea of it, you know? Well, it's easy enough. I mean, you'd have yeah. some of that stuff at home. Well, you'd have it all. Most of it, actually, Most yeah. of it, you'd have it all. Even the you know, we, maybe. Yeah, well, listen, you could use the bacon. Yeah. Streaky yeah, bacon yeah, okay, is, yeah. is, is the Irish version of yeah. it, you know? So, uh, look. Oh wow, lovely. Beautiful, huh? So just when you get that stage now, you're gonna yeah, put them this off the is, grill. Yeah, this is nearly there, you know? You wanna serve we? them up straight away nearly? Serve them up straight away. So we have some rock salt, and we mix some pink peppercorns. Instead of the tin foil, we can't really serve tin foil on the table. So this is kind of the end result that we're looking for, you know? So I just served them with a little spoon. Yeah. So it's a one bite, it's sort of a one spoon dish. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Parmesan and the bacon's great. Yeah. So it works a classic combination. You have that little bit of seawater at the very end. It's nice. Actually, what's the sauce good, yeah? Yeah. The cheese on toast. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It yeah. kind of yeah. gives it that flavour. The oyster kind of gets a little bit lost, but it's, it's yeah. a good introduction to, for people yeah. how to eat oysters, you know? If you have people who are struggling. Guys, and these want to taste? Of course they do. Savages. For the next dish, what we're going to do is uh, we'll use some of Gordon's salad, yeah? Interesting guy, no? Yeah, he was, yeah. So into to what he's doing, and he, he's not interested in uh, mass-produced stuff. He's into growing well, looking after the earth, and then the earth will look after him, that kind of scenario. That's what I got from him anyway. We don't need to do much of the salad, you know? So the next dish that we'll do is a kind of combination of Noel's honey. A spicy honey. A spicy honey, and we'll kind of take the, the same kind of emphasis on it so it's nice and hot. We, we do a tempura of oyster. So this is the, the corn flour, the baking powder. So we have a little bit of sparkling water. I tend to little, make it a wee bit uh, thicker than normal because of the oyster juice going into it, yeah? The oyster. Uh, you were at the, the brewing company there with the guys, yeah? Yeah, but go with Bay, with Tom. Yeah, and how was that? Good. He's given us some milk stout, so it's made with milk sugars right. and chocolate, so it's nice and rich. Okay. Well, what's the other one we have there? The other one is um, it's an Irish red ale. Yeah. So it's made with um, hops and malt in it. And yeah. Very strong flavours. Okay. So we're going to use that for the mussels, maybe. Right? Yeah. Let's uh, let's open them. We we'll have a bit of a taste there and. Um We'll see how it goes. What we do is we just finish this one out, and I actually think we'll, we'll pull some muscles into it. Oh my god, you've done that before, huh? Is that your party trick, is it? We'll take the salad, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little honey dressing, squeeze the lime juice into it, yeah? And we actually we can put a little chili into it just to give it a, an extra bit of a lift. If you wanted to, you could add a bit of coriander in there, so give a nice bit of freshness, even a little bit of mint. So we, if you think about it, we have the nice, fresh, crunchy leaves. We have um, kind of a hot and spicy sweetness from the, the honey dressing. And then we have the fatness 
from the oysters. So we take the oysters into our tempura mix. I do a few extra, yeah? Goes into the fryer. Nice hot fryer. You can hear it spitting at you because of the water. So we take the, um, the salad, we dress it with the, the lemon and the salt and olive oil. Give it a quick little uh, together. So you see the way the oysters are kind of floating up and they're nice and crispy. So when they float up, they're nearly done, are they? Yeah. You see, they're kind of light, nice and light. A little bit of salt. So it's not too stodgy, that batter? No, no, it's very nice and light. And then what we do with this then is we have the honey, Noel's honey, a little bit of chili, just to overextend the heat in it a little bit. Lime zest on top of it. So it's really, really simple. It's uh, all the three suppliers kind of married into one dish. Uh, we have the honey, and we have the salad, and we have uh, German's oysters. Bon appetit, yeah? Okay, guys. Dig in. Dig in, yeah, yeah. Here we go again. Don't they get fed at home? So while the crew destroy the tempura oysters, George and Sean start <coughs> sampling the beer. Can you smell the chocolate? Let's try the other one, yeah? Is this a hoppy one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I like that kind of hops taste, you know? Yeah. Easy, George. There's one more dish to go. Once the mussels have been cleaned, Sean chops some shallots, some chili, and fries it all off with a bit of butter. It's thirsty work, isn't it? I'm saying absolutely nothing. So we're gonna add some of the beer here now. I'm actually surprised there's some beer left. You can see, Majority are open. Parsley in. Did it smell nice? Mm, gorgeous, yeah. It's a shame you don't have smell of vision. Next series. And it's nice to serve some juice with it as well, you know? Simple enough ingredients. Just good ingredients. Good ingredients. And uh, the beer is in the background, it's not overpowering anything. It adds a different dimension to them. So George, that's the, the Galway episode done, yeah? yeah? That's it. Great food, great people. I think I'll have to take you to Sunny Riglow next. Yeah. And uh, go and try and get some venison perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have a walk around. I'll take you to a nice spot where there's some great beer. Right. And um, yeah, you, you come up with the menu. Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's hope the weather sorts itself out. I can't do it, man. I actually can't do it. You're getting too old, man. Really? <laughs> you is old. <laughs> Next time on Find It, Cook It, our fearless foragers head to Wicklow on the search for venison. I, I can't believe we're giving them guns. Uh, what were we thinking? They'll also be foraging with the Glendalock Distillery and putting it all together to create some cracking dishes. Irish Media Network. We entertain.